Later that day, during her class period, I tried somewhat to prove myself because every single one of my classmates thought I was stupid now, when this was shown to be not the case. My initial plan was to earn her respect, because a small part of me thought that this would work. I raised my hand a bunch of times, and each time Mrs. Landon had completely ignored me and only answered the students that were not black. There was a moment where I blurted out the correct answer, and she ended up scolding me for talking without permission. Why don't you shut up, Elijah? I'm sure that was just a lucky guess. We all know your kind just does drugs and sells them, so don't go around acting like a saint. Hey guys, I'm Elijah, and I'm just a normal, regular student at my local high school. I wouldn't say that I love my classes, but they're tolerable. And besides, I managed to pass with straight A's and B's most of the time. Anyway, my classes were okay, only made fun by all of the friends that I had with me. So actually, I guess school isn't bad at all. However, there was just one thing that caused my junior year to go horribly wrong, and it was my science teacher, Mrs. Landon. To be more specific, Mrs. Landon taught AP chemistry, and her class was honestly tough. And not only was the class difficult, but the teacher herself was practically hell to put up with. The first red flag I saw in her was the fact that she seemingly gave the students with lighter skin more attention than they did to me. She was also way more friendly with them and constantly talked to and joked around with them. If you hadn't noticed, I'm black, and I could feel the way she neglected me whenever she was giving out her lesson. Okay. Okay, so what if I was exaggerating? Maybe I was, since I didn't do so great on the tests. Maybe Mrs. Landon talked to those students because they did better on the tests and became her favorite students. But of course, this unfortunately was not the case. When Mrs. Landon began to go into some weird rants of hers, I could definitely see how she felt about people like me. Oh, and class, I've put up your test averages on the board. It's a shame you guys didn't do that great, since I know for sure that my best students are in this period. Oh, Mrs. Landon, tell us who brought the score down. Mason, you know I can't do that. Although, know that most of you did very well. It was just two or three students that ruined it. None of you kids in the front, though. I bet it was Elijah. He looks stupid. Hey, that's rude. But I'm going to admit, you are right. And I could see the way that Mrs. Landon's cheeks turned bright red. She knew it was me, and even had the nerve to admit it. I felt humiliated to no end as well and the kid who said that was smirking at me. This just didn't help matters at all. The next week, my friends and I were passing by the teacher's lounge when I overheard Mrs. Landon saying something totally outrageous. It made me stop in my tracks, and I couldn't help but eavesdrop through the crack in the door. That's why I'm so pissed. It only took one black and Hispanic student to bring my entire fourth period scores down. I just think it's unfair. I'm not so sure you should generalize students and how well they do based on their race. I'm sure your students just need a little more help, and they'll become so much better in no time. Oh, so what? They're not hearing me say this right now. It's completely fine. And besides, it's the truth. You have to admit it. I'm just saying, maybe you could refer them to tutoring sessions? I don't really care about them anyway. My eyes couldn't help but widen. Why did Mrs. Landon even think to announce however she felt to other teachers? It was definitely racist and made me feel pretty uncomfortable. However, I wanted to really make sure that she had something against us and didn't just accidentally let stereotypes slip. It was conveniently everybody's lunch break, so one of my best friends and I picked the lock to Mrs. Landon's door. I then began to dig through her messy files of student assignments and records while my friends stood guard near the door. It took a good while, but I somehow found the stack of papers that contained the last test our class took. I looked through it and grabbed the packet with my name on it and found the answer key. Wait, this wasn't right. Out of the 45 questions in the test, I'd gotten only two wrong. What? I'd gotten a score that was way over the class's average, and Mrs. Landon was just lying her teeth off. I was pretty pissed, since she'd scored me a 23%. I checked her favorite students' tests, and I was also just as surprised as I'd been when I saw my own score. They all had only five questions correct, but Mrs. Landon wrote a huge 100% on theirs. I had no doubt why she did that. Some of them were her friends, kids. I wanted to prove that she was doing something wrong, and I ended up taking the stack of everybody's tests along with the answer sheet, so I had something in my hands to prove what she was doing. Later that day, during her class period, I tried somewhat to prove myself because every single one of my classmates thought I was stupid now, when this was shown to be not the case. 
My initial plan was to earn her respect, because a small part of me thought that this would work. I raised my hand a bunch of times, and each time Mrs. Landon had completely ignored me and only answered the students that were not black. There was a moment where I blurted out the correct answer, and she ended up scolding me for talking without permission. Why don't you shut up, Elijah? I'm sure that was just a lucky guess. We all know your kind just does drugs and sells them, so don't go around acting like a saint. I then decided to get revenge on her in another way than just showing my intelligence. I thought up a bunch of plans and decided that doing something to her outside of school would likely become more effective than during school. The next day, after class, I asked her a few questions in the most polite way I could. Good morning, Mrs. Landon. Um, is there any way that I could get my score for your class raised? I really don't want to fail this semester, since this class is important for my graduation. Well, I actually have something you can do. I guess you could mow my lawn and clean my house or something. I bet your parents and grandparents do that every day, right? Sure, I'd be happy to work on your house for extra credit. But honestly, I was infuriated. There was no way that Mrs. Landon just grouped my adoring and hardworking family into being only field workers and house cleaners. Well, my grandma had owned a boutique store, but it was wrong for my teacher to think that way. But also, my dad was a software engineer, and my mom was working on the school board at this very moment, which completely countered the rude thoughts that Mrs. Landon had. That afternoon, I showed up to her house with a small plastic bag and my school bag. She let me in very rudely, and I put my bag down in her living room. I knew that she was going to try and search my bag for anything, so I kept the plastic bag in my pocket. Meanwhile, I had emptied my book bag completely and only brought my empty notebook. I started working on her yard, trying hard to get the weeds and grass in the corners with high effort. I then began to sneak around her house, trying to see where she was, so I knew when the perfect opportunity to get back at her was. Finally, I saw her asleep on the couch. I slinked into the house, and I saw my notebook lying on her lap. Aha, uh -huh, of course she was looking in my bag. I walked around until I found her bedroom, and she had a photo of her and her husband on the wall. Imagine how he'd feel when he found out his wife was racist and biased. Anyways, I lifted the covers to Mrs. Landon's bed and poured the contents of the plastic bag into it. I had brought bed bugs with me, and I was going to make Mrs. Landon suffer. Hurriedly, I grabbed my book bag and rushed home. A week later, Mrs. Landon didn't show up. Everyone was surprised and wondering where she was, since she'd never missed a day of school in her life. She later sent out a notice that there was a family emergency. I was pretty happy, since the substitute that was assigned to us was very kind. I knew I needed to do something else to get rid of Mrs. Landon permanently though. I still had the stack of papers, and after school had ended, I showed the papers to the vice principal. She was very surprised and kept the papers for safekeeping. For the rest of that entire month, Mrs. Landon wasn't in class. Then one day, I got a call from a strange number. You did this right. Of course not, what are you talking about? And she dropped. I eventually heard from my mom that she was getting fired due to her antics. Finally, I was so sick of her. Since my mom was on the school board, she knew all the juicy details. The bedbugs had caused Mrs. Landon and her family sleepless nights, and she had freaked out over the bedbugs and told everyone it was me who did it. Then she found out she was getting fired and blamed it on me once again, and for the final blow, her husband decided to divorce her. Apparently, he knew about her racism and just grew sick of it. He'd also seen the notice describing the bad things Mrs. Landon had done and had had enough. So she's definitely unhappy now. As for me, I had to serve a week of detention for putting the bugs into Mrs. Landon's bed and for stealing the stack of tests from her classroom. But it was all worth it to see my racist chemistry teacher getting what she deserved. But what do you think?